and thank you for your interest today in the session for CIN on systematic review and evidence synthesis services at the UPC campus of the University of Southern California. So this is going to be a little bit of an um, explanation of what's happened the first few years of starting the systematic review services at the UPC campus. At USC, we decided during COVID, due to um, several requests from faculty members and the explosion of publications in the evidence synthesis field outside of medicine that we would open up a systematic review service. When I was assigned, I had no background in this area, so I really need to learn about the types of reviews and what type of service we would offer. So after doing some research, we found that we really wanted to focus on evidence synthesis and that we needed to be careful with literature reviews, especially with doctoral students who thought that they might be able to use a systematic scoping review or a meta analysis to fulfill their chapter two requirements, which was quickly learned that they should not and cannot because a dissertation is a solo independent project and reviews, especially scoping reviews and and systematic reviews have to be done in a team environment. So we decided to add this service to the University Park campus in July of 2020, but it really took about a year for the um, basically the education of myself and our faculty and to learn about how we would could best go about serving our faculty and our graduate students in the area of evidence synthesis. So the first thing was embarking on proactive professional development, learning about traditional systematic reviews in medicine and evidence synthesis with randomized control trials, and then learning about the newer methodology overlay outside of medical science, which we call non-medical science systematic reviews and evidence synthesis, of course. I was awarded a scholarship for the Social Science Evidence Synthesis Institute and really began learning how to provide the best services possible. So a brief history was we I developed a research guide. We decided what our service offerings would be and what best practices would be for the USC librarians to support faculty work in this area. We opened up the service for teams to come and get support. We obtained the needed softwares. There's multiple softwares that we use at, at USC to support this service. And then after learning a little more, we went back, refined the services, refined the research guide. Um, the next was presenting to ACRL about the service that we were offering. It was relatively new, but we did have some teams making great progress. And then all my first published reviews were completed and they were, um, we also so published concept papers on how the service is, what it's like to collaborate in teams, and what roles the information scientists play versus the faculty and the team members. And by 2023, I was an invited panelist at the ALA annual conference on non-medical social science systematic reviews and evidence synthesis. It was great experience. My co-panelists were all people from the Evidence Synthesis Institute, which trained me in this field. So I felt very honored and happy to be there. Next was pairing with faculty to offer instruction of how to do reviews and evidence synthesis within the graduate school classrooms. So I developed instructional programs for non-medical science systematic reviews and evidence synthesis. I did both one-shot course integrated instructions for evidence synthesis, and I also did some in-depth course in integrated in instruction, where I tailored to the course learning outcomes and um, went as far as doing a mini systematic review throughout several sessions of a course. And it, sometimes I just went in on trained on the software that it takes to do this process, but it was really a robust instructional service, as well as our service to pair with teams and faculty to publish evidence synthesis work. 
So we made up some requirements. It was evident at the onset that you must have clear parameters of what your team will do or not do. So we required a team of three or more. The librarian is an additional team member. The team must include a faculty member other than the librarian. We have loosened up on this, and I have led some that were PhD or doctoral students led teams, but they did have a faculty lead. And um, we made it very clear that our work could not be part of a dissertation. So librarians at USC become a full team member and have co-authorship on publications. Um, they had to be have the right research questions and for the type of review that met our criteria for collaboration. As you noticed on the earlier slide, it, we do not do literature reviews in this form. Our librarians, of course, always will help students do a literature review, but these projects tend to be long-term collaborations. They have to commit to at least a year. And the faculty librarian really serves as the review and information science expert on these projects. We also serve as a project manager. So initially what I do is an intake meeting and you can find all of these templates on my research guide. They're open educational resources or open access. So all of the forms that I use, I developed so that other people could use them. Um, I ask their research questions and if their research questions are in fact supportive of an evidence synthesis collaboration. I talked to them about registering with OSF or JBI. So um, unless they were publishing in something like Campbell's when then we would register with that systematic review database. But what I find is um, OSF is really the best platform for our researchers at USC because we have so many supplemental documents and this allows us to make them available to the public. Um, I do take care of the housekeeping, meaning I build a shared drive and the document developments, which are our, our cues, our justification. I like to have, and you'll see this on my um, project forms, the team compositions, contact information, publishing preferences. So do they use their middle initial? So I have all that from the onset and whoever's doing the OSF registration. Um, it When I started, it was me. Now I have so many teams that I actually have the PIs register themselves. But that way we have the correct publishing uh, for each team member their preferences on their names. I schedule the weekly meetings out. I make them commit to at least a year. And we use these meetings as needed. Anybody who's done this work knows that there are certain times when weekly meetings are just not useful, when we're in searching, when we're in screening phase, when we're extracting data. Those things take more than a week to complete, and we don't really need a meeting. But I do make people commit to one year worth of weekly meetings. And then we talk about refining their research uh, questions if needed, and maybe touch on inclusion and exclusion variables so they know that's coming up next. So our first meeting, I'll call it, and this is after the intake meeting. And when I name these, in this was in a perfect world, sometimes the intake meetings take more than one meeting. Their research questions aren't really aligned with an evidence synthesis project, so they go back and rethink them. Or I may be able to identify very quickly that a review has been done already on their topic and so it's not really a viable project for me and I say if there's something peripheral if you want to change up your research questions or take a slightly different angle which will require then another intake meeting but the first real meeting after we've all agreed on the intake meeting issues of the research questions librarian faculty authorship all those things we meet again and we look at the finalized research question or question we develop the inclusion and exclusion variables. We talk about search terms and I teach them about database thesauri and how to explore the databases for the terms that they use instead of just doing keyword searching. I introduce the systematic tracking sheet. Again, this form is on my, my research guide. And I talk about Zotero a little bit and that there'll be an upcoming training session on Zotero and how to use Zotero and the systematic searching search tracking sheet in conjunction so that eventually I'll be able to make the strategic search chart that we publish in our manuscripts. 
And then we talk a little bit about databases. And I do um, go ahead and at this point, upload that search tracking sheet. So any team member can add databases that they know they want to include. I also do go through and make a list on my own, but I like the team to contribute any databases that they know. Then in what I'll call our second meeting, sometimes this is our third or fourth, um, we really, this is the training for systematic, strategic systematic searching. So I teach them in, uh, really about the tracking sheet. Why are we keeping track in the way that we are? How does this make it a systematic search versus just doing random searching and pulling articles? I teach them about how to use the sheet. I teach them how to use Zotero. I've at this point already authenticated everybody into a, Zotero project for them for their topic and um, so they all have access and I do we do live demo at this point so everybody actually runs a search in one of the databases that's listed so they know how to download a search into Zotero and track it on the tracking sheet and so we talk about a plan for when you hit those bumps in the road, when you can't download them all, how do we get back to that initial search that they did so that there's continuity. And I actually have a few tricks on my on my tracking sheet that you'll see that allows the whole team to help download if it happens to be a database that has low limits and only allows for 100 articles a day to be downloaded and we might have 1500. So we don't want that to take 15 days for one researcher so we go in and we do this very um very targeted and very focused in this time period to get the searching done as quick as we can so let's talk a little bit now about the services that our faculty librarians provide because it's very important to have these um, crystal clear up front so that you don't end up being treated like a research assistant. So we talk about the review types of decision, the development of research questions, all things that I've already gone over. But some of the more important things that we want to talk about here is that we are the information scientist on the team. So we are going to be the best at identifying databases, at developing those search terminologies based on the thesauri of the databases that we're using, making sure that we're inclusive of all the possible terms. And using thesauri obviously helps us do that. Some of the other things that we provide other than project management is um, making sure that we are facilitating the searching and the trainings on the softwares, including Sotero and then Covidence, and then also a new uh, data extraction software that we're using at USC called Cognetto that's made for non-medical science systematic reviews. We also participate in screening when it's appropriate and when we have time. So with 15 or 20 projects running at a time, sometimes I can screen and sometimes I can't. Sometimes I feel confident enough about the topics and sometimes I do not. So I make it very clear that we may or may not participate in screening. I do write the method sections of the all manuscripts of all projects that I'm involved in, both to contribute to my authorship and also because I am the information scientist that knows that evidence synthesis methods that we're using. I also contribute to other sections of the manuscript as needed and as appropriate. So again, some of these fields are in psychology or social work where I'm very well versed. Other ones I've done in engineering or computer science where I don't feel as comfortable contributing to maybe the lit review or the, the discussion portion, other ones I do. Um, I do provide and track all the forms for reproducibility and make sure that those go up on the o on the OSF, and then I create all the charts and template and um, all the charts for publication. So the Prisma table or the Prisma chart, the table for systematic searching, all that type of stuff. An extra thing that I've done that people might be interested in, it really creates value to our service, is I create a publishing. A document and it's also the template is on my my research guide and what it does is I look at the data set of articles that ended up in our final data set that we're working from to extract data and I make a list of all those journal titles and then I also bring in journal titles that I'm familiar with on the topic and let the team also put in journal titles from there the first thing I look at is have they published a systematic review before I have had the experience of being published 
in a very high impact journal that took nine months to approve us because they had such a hard time finding people that could peer review this methodology since it's relatively new. I mean, now we've had a probably seven, eight years, but there's still not a lot of experts out there in the non-medical science evidence synthesis methods field. So I like to look at have that has that journal published systematic reviews before or scoping reviews, whatever the case may be, meta-analysis, and make sure that that's one variable we're looking at. I also put in impact factors and OA fees and if we have transformational agreements and all those important things that will help the team really decide on what our target is. And I do this while we're writing the manuscript. So before the manuscript is done, we have a target publication. I also provide editorial review in most cases. Sometimes I'm not needed as much depending on the team's comp composition. If I have five faculty from five R1 institutions, um, I feel confident that they don't need my editorial support. But if they want it, or if they, it's a team that's grad students and one faculty other than myself, I definitely do the editorial review. So scholarly output, since we've been doing this, and really I think that our our services really started in March of 2022. So from March of 2022 till July of 2024, I have 20 publications and presentations from um, my my collaborations on systematic reviews. I was invited panelist at ALA, as I mentioned. I have the research guide, which is full of OAs and OERs for people to really be able to look at every step of the process and what are the best practices? How do we make decisions, both as the information scientist on the team, decisions about collaboration, decisions about when do we reassess and say, is, all, is the whole team really doing enough work to get authorship and all those things? Then all the open access templates for each procedure table and chart that's necessary for publishing uh, evidence synthesis work. And then I've been doing a lot of peer reviewing. As I mentioned, it's hard to find people that know the methods. So recently I peer reviewed the new guidelines for non-medical science systematic reviews for Campbell Systematic Review Database. I am a peer reviewer on both the Journal of Information Analysis and the Journal of Librarianship and Information Science. And I currently have 12 new teams running in seven different disciplines, collaborating with five schools at USC and seven external universities. Now, these are just the ones that I have going on right now. The list of external collaborations is quite impressive over all the 25 publications I've had, plus these 12 current teams. And I'm very proud of the fact that USC has been able to be a leader and really working with teams from so many impressive universities. It, currently, I have three journal paper submissions in and two conference presentations. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm running a full set of instructional services. So yearly I do for the Center for Excellence in Research at USC, I do um, a workshop on evidence synthesis. And then I'm also working within different schools, helping with graduate students. I actually have a professor in communications in the PhD program that wants his graduate students to do a systematic review. And so I work closely with that course as it goes on with many live class sessions. So I talked a lot about the um, my research guide, which is right here, and I'm going to click on it, but I'm not sure if it's going to share with you. I can see that it isn't, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. But I do encourage you to check out the Evidence Synthesis Research Guide at the University of Southern California. My contact information is here. I'm an active member in the ESI Institute at the University of Minnesota, and their listserv is so valuable because this is, again, relatively new, applying this methodology outside of medical science and lots of new things come up. So being on that ESI listserv, I also encourage anybody that's doing this work and has not applied to go and be trained with the Evidence Synthesis Institute to try and do that. They are not only great at training, but a wealth of information and great networking and contacts as you move forward. I'm there every year at their conference. I presented um, several sessions last year, and I'm sure I will again. 
again, but please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help guide anybody with individual projects that you may need help on, or if you want to collaborate with your institution, or if you just want to talk about the how to start this service. One thing I didn't mention is I will not be, I'm not a solo show. As I've been doing this, I train, I work collaboratively with our subject librarians who are now starting to run their own systematic review projects. So I have a lot in social work. Our, our new, newer social work librarian is running a few on her own. And I have a lot in education. And we have a new education librarian who is partnering with me. And after this, we'll be able to run on their own. So the idea is really that we'll be able to have our team where this is just another service that we can offer, another tool in our toolkit that will help faculty, and help us as information scientists support our academic community. Thank you for being here today. Have a great day, and please feel free to reach out.